In this example, I have declared a string and assigning it a value, Jason. And I have an integer ID. And I will accept the value of ID from user. To accept an input from user, we use a special class called scanner. And we need to create a reference variable or an instance of scanner type. I could call it whatever, I'm calling it input. And just like system.out is used to, to, to send an output to the screen, system.in is, is used for taking an in input from the user. I also have red lines on scanner. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist. What does that mean if you have a red line on a class and you know it's a valid class? You just have to declare it? That means it belongs to a package other than java.lang. So you need to hover over and you can click on import. And then the import line will be added and the error will disappear. Uh, what did you say to do? Right click on scanner? Uh, just bring your mouse over on scanner. I think I got it. Yeah. I have multiple uh, imports. So I have import scanner Java. I have import scanner com.sumtools. Uh, get rid of that com.sumtools. Just scanner. Java.util scanner is what we need. Java.util. OK. Thank you. OK. Next, after that, we will. Whenever you take an input from user, remember you have to tell the user what you're asking. So you must have some kind of a message. So system.out.print, enter ID. ID equals to input dot next in. So line number nine will show a message to the user on the prompt. And line number 10 will blink the cursor as the user type in a value. It will take the value and push it into the ID variable. Now, let me teach you one of the shortcuts. How do you display an output to the screen? You type system.out.println, correct? Now, there is a shortcut to typing system.out.println. And what is that? Type sysout. Just type sysout. And this is a shortcut in Eclipse, sysout. And then press and hold the control on the keyboard and press spacebar. Press and hold control and hit the spacebar after you type sysout. And when you run it, it will first ask you to enter an ID. And when you are done typing an ID in the console, press enter, and it'll show you both outputs. Is everybody caught up with this? Yes. OK, awesome. Now let's add one more item to it. Let's learn how you can accept name from user as well. So for that purpose, I'll just copy paste the two lines. And I'll say, OK, enter name. And uh, I'll replace the second line with name equals to input dot, because uh, 
in scanner class, you have different next methods for different data types. So for accepting an input where uh, it will have multiple words, we use next line. Okay, who tried to run this? And then what happened? I tried to run it. Um, it lets me do the ID, but then once I type in an ID, it just says enter name, colon, space, name, colon, and then the ID shows up. So it doesn't let you take the second input, correct? Correct. And the reason is because when you are typing ID and you press enter after that, right? Enter is a valid string value. So what goes in the name is the enter key. And it's like, okay, name has a value. So it just goes, jumps directly to the output. So what we need to do is if you have an input before a string input, always we try to absorb that. And how do you absorb it? You just type a blank input dot next line. And that is to absorb the enter key from above. And after you make that modification, rerun the program and it should work just fine. Now we will learn another way to accept an input from user using a dialog box. So I have enter name, right? So let me make one um, other variable here, string. school equals to new string well, just a, an empty instance and on line number 15 i will type school equals to Do you guys remember the name of the class that we used for bringing a dialog box? J option pain, right? J option pain dot. This time we're going to take input. Oh, sorry, uh, not input. Show input dialog. And make sure that you have two imports. One is the scanner import and one is the J option pane import. Now, going back to the end of line 17, whatever line it is for you, I will now be accepting an input for GPA from user using J option pane dot show input dialog. And this line will error out and I will, oh, sorry, GPA, I will fix it but I need to explain one thing to you before I fix it. Syntactically, uh, in terms of J option pain, there isn't any problem, but the problem is when you are taking an input in a dialog box, the data type is string. And you cannot assign a string to a double variable without converting it. So that's why we need to convert it. And how do you convert? Well, oops, in Java, we have different conversions for different data types, unlike C-sharp where you use convert dot. 
So if I'm converting a value into a double type, I have a built-in class called double. If I'm converting a value to an integer type, I have a built-in class called integer, similarly float, similarly short, similarly long, okay? And each data type has a method to convert to a primitive type because a string is a reference and double is primitive. So there is a class in between, which we call wrapper classes, which allow you to convert back and forth between reference to primitive, primitive to reference. So double has a built-in method called parse double, which takes a string value and converts it into an, a double primitive value. So make sure you open the parentheses to the left of J option and you close the parentheses towards the end of the instruction. and then display it as I added line 22 here. So when I run it, it asks for an ID, asks for a name, it asks for a school name, and then asks for a GPA. and then displays all outputs.